All right, AMP1 students, in this video we're going to continue talking about the integumentary system. And we've mainly been focusing on the anatomy and the structures that are part of the integumentary system. So in this video, we're going to talk more about the functions. And all the different parts of the integumentary system that we identified in earlier videos um, play a role um, in the various functions of our skin. All right, so the first one, which everybody is usually the very first function everybody thinks of when we think about our skin is protection. And that's so true. The epidermis, remember it has all those layers of squamous cells, and there's many layers, so they call it stratified squamous, and they're all tightly packed together. They are, they are just a barrier to anything wanting to try to enter our bodies through our skin. Um, so the epidermis serves as that physical barrier um, to prevent, you know, any sort of injury or trauma or anything, um, any bacteria, something like that, trying to get into our, get into our body through the skin. So, and also other things like toxins and certain chemicals, you know, those kind of things as well will be the skin our epidermis will protect from. And Remember that we also in that epidermis have those melanocytes and what they do is produce the melanin and that melanin is produced more when we're exposed to solar radiation or UV um, radiation, so mainly sunlight. And so that protects our um, cells, that melanin pigment be, being in there protects our cells, specifically our DNA in our cells from um, from getting mutated. So, so the, there's a lot of protection going on. That's a, kind of the main function of the skin. Um, so it's protecting our bodies from a lot of different things. All right, but <clears throat> there's other functions that may be a little less well known. Um, <clears throat> we talked about this when we talked about the epidermis and the keratin, K-E-R-A-T-I-N, um, that protein. That provides the epidermis to be very water resistant. It's not waterproof because we do have fluids that can, you know, come through the skin and be absorbed through the skin, but mostly um, we're, we have a water resistant skin. Um, and so that um, allows for maintaining the proper amount of water in our bodies. So if we didn't, if it wasn't water resistant, we may like lose water or we may like take on too much water, like you know, um, gain a lot of water, and that would that would affect our normal functioning of our body. We just need a certain amount of water, and so to maintain hydration. So, so that is very important function of the skin too, is to prevent you know excessive amounts of water loss or even like excessive amounts of water gain. So, keep our keep our hydration level and in that homeostatic range. And we'll talk about um, some disorders and kind of things, you know, abnormalities that can cause these functions to be altered and how that leads to diseases and things. So, but we'll do that in another video later on. All right, so after the protection and prevention of water loss and water gain, um, metabolic regulation is the next function of the skin. And People are probably familiar with this one. Maybe don't. Maybe you don't know the details, but pretty familiar with the fact that our um, skin, the keratinocytes that are in our epidermis, um, they are able to make vitamin D. Now they 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 have a chemical, a molecule in them that is we call it a precursor to vitamin D. That just means that. Um, it just needs one little chemical change on it, and then it can become that vitamin D molecule. And so, but the the keratinocytes that are in our epidermis need help because they can't convert that precursor to vitamin D without the help of sunlight. So the ultraviolet radiation allows for them to convert. So the ultraviolet radiation is kind of serving as a catalyst for that reaction. And so it'll convert the precursor of vitamin D to the active molecule vitamin D. Um, and so, 
So that's another function of our skin. And we'll talk more about that whole process when we get to the skeletal system. They do, they do talk about it a little bit here in the book, and you can read over that. But we'll talk about that in more detail when we get to the skeletal system. Because vitamin D does have a role in um, the health of our skeletal system, too. But for now, for the skin, just remember that uh, another function of the skin is to produce vitamin D, which is needed by body for our body for various important processes. All right, so moving on, we got some more functions. Um, our skin has function functions in secretion of substances, and so two that we're probably pretty familiar with is sweat. So that's considered a secretion. Um, and you know why we do that, it's to release heat, so that way we can, our body temperature can be regulated. And then the other secretion that's probably pretty well known is that oily secretion, it's called sebum, comes from our sebaceous glands. And that um, particular molecule, or I guess substance, it's not actually, it's got molecules in it, but that particular um, secretion has um, the ability to lubricate our epidermis and our hair, keep it from drying, drying out. Um, and it also, kind of like the keratin, that protein in our keratinocytes, it also helps with water resistance too. So it keeps our hair like nice and shiny, and our scalp, things like that. So, so that's another secretion. So definitely our skin has the role of secreting substances. Um, and then the other part of this function is absorption. And so our skin does have the ability to for certain things to pass through the epidermis and get into the dermis. And so we've figured this out and we've kind of figured out how to formulate drugs in order for them to be placed on our skin and for them to move through the epidermis and into the dermis and get into the bloodstream. So a different way to administer medication rather than through like a pill that you would swallow or an injection, um, they, there is a way that we can um, have certain drugs um, formulated so that they can enter the body through the skin. So some examples like the birth control um, patches, that would be an example of um, a drug that can be absorbed through the skin. Um, the nicotine patches that, that people use to try to, um, try to uh, stop smoking um, is also, uh, you might have heard of fentanyl, Patches, fentanyl is an opioid pain medication. Um, so you, there is fentanyl patches that can be placed on people where they get, you know, a kind of a steady, and it's usually medication that's given steady over long periods of time. Usually you keep these patches on for, you know, days or so, and then um, over time they, they release a certain amount of medication. So, so absorption is also a role or function of the, of the skin as well. So, All right, but we're not done yet. Um, we talked a little bit about in our dermis, we had those dendritic cells. They were present in our dermis, and they were part of the immune system. So they kind of, um, kind of serve as uh, um, cells that can destroy um, toxins or bacteria, uh, fungus, something like that, something that shouldn't be in the body that could cause disease. Um, so we have those in the dermis, and we do have them in the epidermis as well. I don't think we, I specifically mentioned those, but there is, there are some dendritic cells in the epidermis as well. So if there's anything that gets past the epidermis, and usually that's, you know, Usually if there's a break in the skin, that's usually when you'll get some pathogen like a bacteria getting um, into your, trying to get into your body through the epidermis. Um, then you have these dendritic cells kind of like the next line of defense. And so they're in the epidermis or the dermis and they would, you know, locate those bacteria and destroy them before they were able to, you know, get to your bloodstream and move on to different areas of your body. So, so it has a role in immune function. And then the temperature regulation, because it has sweat glands in it, the integumentary system contains sweat glands, and also because it contains blood vessels, um, specifically the, the uh, 
capillaries, which are the smallest blood vessels, and they're in the dermal area. Um, body temperature can be regulated using those two effectors. So those would be considered effectors. So let's say we get really, really hot um, and our body temperature starts to rise. Um, this, you know, our sensory receptors would detect that and send the signal to our brain, specifically the hypothalamus. And then the hypothalamus may tell the sweat glands, hey, start producing sweat and, you know, start secreting it so that we can try to get some of this heat out of the body. And then the uh, hypothalamus would probably also send a message to those capillaries in the dermis, those little bitty blood vessels. Um, and it would um, tell them to, like, either um, get wider, they call it vasodilate, so get wider and send more blood to the skin, and that way if we get more blood to the surface of the skin, blood carries a lot of heat with it, so we can get that heat to dissipate away from, uh, away from the body and away from the um, internal, more deeper structures. Um, so that's an example of um, how the integumentary system is involved in temperature, body temperature regulation, so. All right, and then our last function is sensory reception. So we did talk about the tactile cells, also called sensory receptors. Um, those are present in the dermis as well, and so they are there to detect any sort of external um, changes in the environment. So temperature changes, pressure changes, um, touch, you know, anything like that, and send that information to the, to the brain or the spinal cord, and we can respond to that. So, so there's a lot of nerves in the, specifically the dermis um, that are there to pick up any changes that are, that's going on in our external environment um, and send that to our, to our nervous system. And so we can respond appropriately. So, so it's a very sensory organ. So that is all for this video. I'll see you in the next video.